Hey guys, welcome to my channel This Year Abroad, where I make videos about living, working, and traveling in Thailand. In this video, I will be answering your questions about teaching in Thailand. So before we continue, make sure you subscribe to my channel, you like this video as well and hit that notification button to get notifications about my video. And before I continue and we actually start, I actually start answering the questions, please watch the video till the end because in the end I will be giving you some really good information, some really good advice that a lot of people do not consider when they're actually doing their TEFL courses or when they're actually planning on teaching uh, abroad. So please look out for that. So the first question that we have is uh, a person saying, I can't imagine being in Thailand without AC. Is there AC in a classroom? Can I wear shorts? I don't know if it's a serious question or not, but I am still going to answer this uh, question. Yes, there are ACs in classrooms, but not in every single classroom or school. There are low budget schools where you might not find an air conditioning and you might just be feeling hot while you're teaching. You will get just a fan which will be keeping you warm and no you are not allowed to wear shorts when you are teaching you need to wear a formal attire as, as in a shirt with pants and even a tie when you're teaching in a school so another question about where do i teach well when I first came to Thailand, after completing my TEFL certificate, my first job was at a primary school here in Chiang Mai. And uh, they were paying me 30,000 baht and uh, I only had a 10 month contract with them. So during the uh, summer vacation time, I was actually not getting paid by that school. And I actually had to work uh, part time with the same school. I had to join the summer program in the same school to get the salary for those two months that were actually uh, unpaid. After that, uh, I joined the C TEFL. C TEFL is the same organization where I did my TEFL course from. Uh, the reason I actually joined uh, the TEFL, uh, the C TEFL place, uh, is because uh, they were offering me a better package, and on top of that, there were much more opportunities uh, at that place. And I'm actually currently still teaching there. I have been teaching there for uh, more than three years now in uh, C TEFL, and uh, yeah, it's going really good. Okay, I have a really interesting question about the education system in Thailand. Like, is it different from places like uh, uh, US, uh, India, Pakistan, and places like this? Uh, well, yes, it is very different when it comes to, specifically, I will talk about when it comes to the English language. Uh, now, uh, when we are taught, we are taught in a very different way the English language in a very different way uh, compared to the people uh, here in Thailand. So just to give you a slight bit picture, a lot of uh, people, uh, uh, future teachers or potential teachers who want to be teachers here in Thailand uh, are a bit nervous about maybe they have to like uh, teach very difficult English language and uh, there is nothing like that, right? So when you start teaching English here in Thailand, you will know that when you actually start teaching, at, at least for the first few years that you're teaching, you will be teaching pretty much basic vocabulary. Right, you will only be helping them improving vocabulary. When I joined the school from grade one to grade six, I was actually helping them improve their overall vocabulary, like teaching them about uh, places in a city, uh, names of animals, uh, verb, verbs, like running and uh, uh, eating, uh, helping them work on their pronunciation and basic grammar, such as what is uh, present tense, past tense and future tenses. So it's not that difficult to actually teach English uh, here in Thailand because your entire focus will be on very basic English, at least for the first few years, uh, before you actually decide on moving to like um, more like international schools or if you want to teach at colleges or you want to teach at universities where you might be teaching a bit more advanced 
English. But uh, before that, if you're talking about primary school and maybe some secondary school uh, schools, you will not have to actually worry about uh, like the the English language that you will be focusing on too much. So it will be mostly just a basic language. And I'm very sure it's not gonna be at all hard for you guys to know uh, vocabulary and basic grammar skills that you can teach those kids. I have another interesting question about TOEIC requirements. Uh, yes, for non-native English speakers, there is a TOEIC requirement. You need to have a score of 600 plus uh, to become a non-native English speaking teacher. That is what majority of the schools require for teachers to have, or you need to have an IELTS score of plus five. Either one will do when you're applying for a teaching position here in Thailand as a non-native English speaker. Okay, next, is TEFL course or TEFL certification a must to teach in Thailand and where I did my TEFL certification from? Uh, yes, you need to have some kind of certification to show that you can teach uh, here in Thailand as a foreigner. You can do a uh, TEFL course, a TESOL or CELTA. Like they're like these three things that you can do to actually start teaching English in Thailand. All these courses are focused towards how to teach English as a second or a foreign language. All right. So for those people whose English is not their first language. On top of that, uh, if you have a uh, bachelor's degree in education that actually gives you the ability to apply for better uh, schools uh, especially talking about international school they require uh, teachers to have at least a bachelor's degree in education and hence once you do have a bachelor's degree in education uh, you can expect to get paid much higher compared to those people who have a TEFL TESOL or only CELTA certification Okay, talking about my own TEFL certification, yes, I have done my TEFL course and I did it around uh, more than four years back from the same place where I'm teaching right now, which is C TEFL. I will put the, uh, put the link in the description below uh, where you can find information about the TEFL course if you are interested in doing that. Okay, another interesting question that I have is, uh, could you please tell us more about the skills and knowledge required for teaching in Thailand? Uh, well, to be honest, when I started teaching here in Thailand, the only experience that I had about teaching English was the one that I got from doing my TEFL course. So when I did the TEFL course from C TEFL, uh, they have uh, this thing about where they take you to different schools and you have to give at least uh, six practical lessons which you pre-prepare uh, while you're doing the course and you have to give, uh, give those lessons in a real classroom environment. So that was pretty much the only teaching experience I had before I actually uh, started teaching properly when I landed my first job. But that actually gave me in enough information to actually know what I should be doing and should not be doing in a real classroom environment. What kind of students I will be engaging with, uh, what kind of mindset those students have, and uh, also what I will be generally teaching. And once I joined the schools, I, will, I was teaching, like I said before, uh, pretty much basic uh, vocabulary and basic English grammar. So you, sh you should have uh, good vocabulary, definitely good English vocabulary. Uh, you need to know your grammar basics for the English, uh, for the English language, and they review that during the course as well, uh, at least uh, where I did my course. And they, I've, I've, I've heard from people that don't, not every uh, TEFL course actually takes you to a actual uh, classroom in a, in, in a school where you actually teach but my course did and it uh, gave me a lot of insight what they are what they are actually looking for either like the school is looking for and how we're supposed to teach the student and prior to that like I said before I had no such teaching experience at all all the experience I got was from there and just having a uh, pretty much a good vocabulary and good English grammar as well as a good uh, uh, accent actually helped me to uh, land a job real quick right after I graduated from my TEFL course. 
So another interesting question is about TEFL internship in Thailand. So the student asked me if it is good for him to join a TEFL internship program and also in Thailand as he in the future plans on working as a teacher in Japan. Well, if you already know that you are planning on working in Japan, I would actually suggest to you that try to get a TEFL internship in Japan rather than focusing on getting an uh, internship in Thailand. Of course, a TEFL internship is a really good idea. It gives you a lot of teaching experience and also it looks really good on your resume and it can help you land the kind of job that you are actually looking for. But at the same time, because your focus is actually to end up in Japan rather than in Thailand, try searching for internship programs in Japan, right? So that will actually have much stronger credibility towards your resume than rather than saying, oh, I did my internship in Thailand and now I'm moving to Japan. If your final destination is Japan, try to just focus mostly on uh, doing your internship in Japan. The reason is it's if you have experience for that particular place, uh, the employer will know that you have you know about their culture, you know th about their uh, teaching techniques, you know about their teaching environment, which will actually be more beneficial to you than doing your internship, uh, TEFL internship from a different country and then moving to a completely separate country. Right, so I have a question from a teacher. I believe he is already teaching here in Thailand and he's teaching maths and physics uh, here in Thailand. And he's asking a question that is he allowed as a teacher to teach uh, after school, like tuition after school to earn some extra income? Well, that is a really interesting question and I hope the way I try to explain it, uh, you can understand what I'm trying to say. So officially it is, illegal to have your own private students or teach after school but at the same time there are those who are doing so okay a really good question is it uh, possible to apply for a teaching vacancy in thailand and face the interview without coming to thailand well uh, the short answer is no so you actually have to be in thailand yourself when you are looking for a teaching position as they will not cater you or your resume if you are applying from outside of the country simple reason being there are already a teachers here in thailand who are looking for job and that is actually the system they uh follow which is that a person needs to be here they need to give a demo lesson they have to be uh, have to go to the school and all those uh particular requirements that they have so if you're applying no matter how much experience as a teacher you have uh even you have the certification you have the experience uh, and everything they will not cater your cv or resume till you're actually applying from within Thailand. So technically, you need to be in Thailand when you're applying for a teaching position. So a very straightforward question that I have is that is TEFL certification important to teach here in Thailand? Uh, the short answer is uh, yes, but it's not only TEFL certification. You can have a TEFL certification or a TESOL certification or a CELTA certification. All these three pretty much play the same role when you're actually looking forward to teaching English uh, as a second language uh, in a place like Thailand. So yes, you need at least some kind of certification to show that you do have some teaching experience or you learned about something about how to teach to actually start teaching here in Thailand. On top of that, if you have a bachelor's degree in education, that is even better because then you can actually apply for higher positions in better schools, such as international schools, and your pay can actually be a bit more higher compared to those people who are who only have a TEFL or TESOL or a CELTA certification. Okay, I do get a lot of people telling me about their uh, 
bachelor's and master's degree that they have done it in engineering they have done it in english literature uh, or sociology or psychology or uh, many other different things well just to make it clear to all of you that it is not a particular requirement that you only need to have a bachelor's degree in education to do a TEFL certificate or to actually start teaching here in Thailand, you just need a bachelor's degree. That can be in any field at all. So it is not necessarily important that you have to do your bachelor's degree in a specific field to start teaching English in Thailand. And you can just, whatever bachelor's degree you have in whichever field, you just do a TEFL certificate and then you can start teaching in Thailand okay let's talk about salary uh yes i get a lot of messages asking about salaries and i'm just going to discuss that with you a little bit but before i do let me tell you about my first job so right after i graduated from the tefl course which i did from c tefl i was offered a job instantly at a primary school in chiang mai through my own institution and the baseline salary that I was getting over there as my first job was 30,000 Thai baht. Now, uh, I stated that the baseline salary is 30,000 baht and that is what you should be looking at when you're looking for a job here in Thailand. And I actually got called out for it saying that the non-native English speakers in Thailand get paid around 20,000 baht baseline. Well, that, that might be true. Actually, I did look, yes, there are, uh, schools that actually offer non-native English speakers much more a uh, much less salary compared to the no, um, compared to the native English speakers so there is that tendency to happen but at the same time these things uh, happen because uh, the non-native English speakers are more inclined on taking those offers so what particularly I'm trying to say here is that not every school will be offering a non-native English speaker a 20,000 baht salary. They will be offering, uh, there are schools that actually offer a very decent salary. And I know a number of non-native English speaker, English teachers here in Thailand that are, that are actually getting more than 30,000 baht salary. So yes, it can be uh, 20, it can be 30, it can be 40, it can be 50,000 baht as well. And of course, uh, if you're thinking it's easy to get these jobs, not actually for a non-native English speaker. A non-native English speaker actually has to struggle a bit more to find good jobs. They have to research more. They have to actually show their abilities uh, a bit more and they need to be a bit more hardworking uh, compared to native English speakers to actually get in those positions. Uh, so uh, in short, just trust me when I say this, I actually, worked very hard to get to the position I am in right now. <laughs> okay, so you're planning on coming here as a student. You want to complete your master degree or PhD from Thailand and uh, you want to work part time as a teacher here. That is one of the questions I got. Well, that is uh, legally not possible because when you come here to Thailand, you can either apply for a student visa or you can apply for a non-immigrant B visa, which allows you to work here in Thailand. You cannot get both the visas at the same time. So if you are planning on coming here to study and you want to teach part time, you will not be doing that legally. So one very important question that I almost forgot to answer is that the place where I'm teaching right now, which is CTEFL or EFL, do they hire non-native English speaking teachers who do not possess a native English speaking country passport? Well, the answer to that is yes. And I am a perfect example for that. I have been teaching there for a bit over three years now, and I am a non-native English speaking teacher who does not possess a native English speaking country passport. Okay, moving over to the last question of the day, which is I consider the most important question of all. And while I'm explaining you the answer of this question, I will also be telling you something really important that I would like you guys to consider 
when you are actually planning on doing your TEFL course. Now I have this question which says that can I or should I do a TEFL course from my own country or from my home country or if I should do a TEFL course online. Now well there you can definitely do that but look at the bigger picture. Now let me tell you about myself. When I wanted to do the TEFL certificate, the whole point for doing the TEFL certificate for me was to go to a different country and start teaching English there. Hence, my target at the end of the day was to come to Thailand, live here and start teaching English here in Thailand. So rather than doing a TEFL certificate from my own home country, I did some research online. I found some good TEFL courses or institutes that provided TEFL certification and I asked them a lot of questions about what they offer except for a TEFL certificate. Right, so the most important thing or the most important question that I asked all of them was, will the institute be able to help me find a job? Right, now at the end of the day, that is the goal right find a job in thailand and start teaching here so there were institutes i selected c tefl because they said that they will provide me assistance in finding my first job and they delivered right so i was able to find my first job through them and right after i finished my certificate uh they arranged me arranged an interview for me and uh, the school actually liked me and they hired me as a primary english teacher right so i was teaching primary uh section of this school here in chiang mai now what i want you guys to consider is that i get a lot of messages about people telling me that uh they have already started doing their tefl certificate in their home country or uh, they have already completed their TEFL certificate, but from their home country. Now you have to consider the bigger picture. The reason you're doing a TEFL certificate is so that you can teach English at a different country, in a different country, such as Thailand, Japan, Korea, Myanmar, Laos, Vietnam, places like this. So if that is your end goal, why don't you consider doing a TEFL certificate from those uh, in those countries? That way, it, your chances of actually landing a job become better. Now, don't just blindly just uh, go to any TEFL Institute in the country you want to teach in. Look what they offer, right? I did a very in-depth research before I actually, um, uh, before I actually selected C TEFL because they kind of uh, they kind of clicked to me okay so they kind of clicked they uh, uh the people over there were really good and they actually helped me find uh, a job and that is what i was looking for so if you're considering of doing a TEFL certificate look at look at the bigger picture if you're planning on going to thailand do a TEFL certificate from there from an institute that is offering you assistance in finding a job same goes if you're planning on going to japan Look for an institute there with the same criteria. So that is something really important I want to tell you. And uh, there are so many people, especially non-native English speakers that are in, uh, that have actually come to Thailand after completing their TEFL course from home. And they said that they could not find a job and they actually went back, right? And this is one of the most important criterias, most important thing I can tell you, which is that if you are planning on doing your TEFL certificate and teach abroad, do it from a country where you plan on teaching as well as from the institute that can actually support you to find a job. This is a very important point and please do consider that if you still have not done your TEFL course and you plan on moving to a different country and become a teacher. Okay, so that is what I wanted to let you guys know. I hope I answered most of the questions that you guys asked. Uh, there are probably some questions that I missed or did not answer, but I tried my best to answer as many questions as possible. 
and I hope you find the information useful. So uh, before I end this video, please subscribe to my channel if you have still not subscribed. Make sure you like this video as well and also uh, hit that notification button to get notifications about my video. Every click, every subscribe, every like, every hit on that notification button supports this channel. Thank you so much for your time and I will see you guys later. Bye-bye.